Honestly, when I say that I have needed this so as a road trip, well, just even broader than that, just this lifestyle yeah, just chilling. of just Tim, his camera, a good mate, yeah, just doing what they want to do, doing what they want to do, hanging out. I feel like you just need that reminder every now and then in life of like life is okay, life is yeah. enjoyable sometimes, you know. Because when you just work non-stop in a job that you don't necessarily love, right? Yeah. You can get really stuck in this idea that life is just, that's all, all life is, is just yeah. work, 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 work. And I love doing stuff like this because it just... Reminds you that life's good. It just reminds you that life has its beautiful moments, you know. Look at these beautiful frosted trees. Oh, it's so pretty. Let's go and check what if I guess like... A road trip with a good friend can be a wonderful thing. This video is about going on a road trip to fulfill a bit of a childhood dream and to pick up something for the channel. The giant car, we have chargers, we have a Tim, we have yeah. a wheel with a camera. <laughs> That's with everything, right? We're picking up a rear projection CRT. And while this CRT will get its own proper dedicated video for tinkering and testing in time, this episode is more about the journey. And I think that's a good metaphor for life. Life is best enjoyed as a journey and not a series of destinations. It's easier said than done, I know, but if you truly can embrace the journey and enjoy it for what it is, there is so much more joy to be found along the way that you might just forget for a moment that you even have a destination. So once again, this one is less about a TV and more about a road trip with a good friend. So if you're up for a road trip, why not join us? Get yourself a cup of tea or a beer if that's more your thing and come along for the ride. Let me take a moment to give you a bit of an idea as to the why behind getting this particular CRT. Ever since I was little, I was just captured by their size, how they worked with the mirrors and the three CRT projection tubes. Something about their kind of dreamlike, mildly blurry image just captured me as a kid, so I've wanted one ever since. <laughs> but there's more to it than just that. Another part of the why is a good practical reason. I've been wanting to put together a sort of Greenham Gaming Studio set here in Sweden, and I wanted to get a TV as a sort of studio background that I can sit in front of, or that myself and a guest can sit in front of as we talk, and we can put relevant graphics up onto. Very similar to the way that news presenters do as they're introducing a story. And this particular TV just fit the bill perfectly. Its size and its warm, soft image makes for a perfect background TV. As for the road trip, the sights and sounds, and just spending quality time with a good friend 
on the road was just so soothing to my soul. So I just want to share some of that coziness with you. So I'm going to go ahead and be quiet for a bit and just let you enjoy the ambience of the road trip. think of a station wagon, I think of a Volvo. Yeah, a V70. Yeah, V70. Yeah. Or I think of like the old 240 wagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 245 actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those ones you could literally hold a small house in. They're yeah, so you could live in them. People in actually them. did and I think still do. Yeah. But this V70 is just so well suited to what we're doing now. Yes. This V70 is in its element right now. It's in the cold, it's in the snow. On the road trip, it's where it's meant to do. It's probably 0.5 per 100 k's right now. Very good fuel efficiency. Actually, 0.4 actually. Yeah, it's barely burning fuel. Nope. Five cylinder is just purring away. Yeah, just on these like long road trips, these cars are in their element. They're meant to go down the road. Yeah. We've arrived. We were just commenting that my god, if this, if we've driven this three hours, spent all that money on fuel, and this thing doesn't fit. Beast. The beast. But luckily, we have another beast for it to go into. Mm. Uh, it'll fit. Yeah, it'll fit. It's a bit pretty tight. It's tight. But it'll fit. Yeah, it will fit. I think it'll fit by the centimeter. Yeah, it's tight. There's no denying that. No, but we measure, measured it. We should have 0.5 centimeters to go on each side. 0.5. What a margin. Perfect. Oh, I think we need to turn the other way. Oh, really? It's not going to fit? Yeah, we need to turn the other way. And then rotate. Rotate. Yes. Oh, this way. Oh, oh, perfect. Sweet. There we go. Oh, yes. 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 We have to push it a bit. Oh. Yes. Oh, look at that. It's in. If we catch the for it. Oh, man. How good is that? Thank you. Come on, bro. Yes. yes. We have a CRT. We have a CRT. Ah. It is in. It is in. The mighty Sony. Let's go home with it. Oh my god. Look at it. So uh, good. Look at that thing taking up the entire truck. Taking the whole <laughs> back of the car. After loading the 61 kilogram beast into the car, I began to think about what a true friend Will was to help me get this TV. There's a classic meme about how a true friend is a person who helps you move a Sony Trinitron. It's funny, but there is a deeper meaning there. To get a bit vulnerable with you, for my whole life I've struggled with a sense of abandonment. I've struggled with the idea that my friends will leave me behind because I'm not good enough. 
And I share this not because I want you to feel sorry for me, but because I'm, a, I'm thinking that maybe some of you might relate. And if you're like me and you have crappy self-esteem, you might even blame yourself and say that it's somehow your fault that people let you down. And frankly, it's bullshit because we shouldn't be taking responsibility for other people's shitty behavior. Part of the reason I think I love tech so much is that people have let me down in times where tech hasn't. And to be honest, if enough people let you down in a short time frame, you can begin to really feel like there's no good people left. So, on the lighter side, after all of that, that's why I think it's so important to spend time with a good friend, to be reminded that not everyone sucks, that there are still so many good people in this world who are willing to stand with you. This road trip made me reflect on what some of the qualities are that make a true friend and I thought I'd share them with you. A true friend might think you're crazy to get a fat old TV, but rather than just saying, good luck, you're nuts, I think a good friend says, you know what? I think you're nuts, but I'm not gonna let you do this alone. true friend is someone who stands by you, even when it's inconvenient. A true friend is someone who doesn't question you on the why of every decision endlessly. They just say, if it's important to you, then it's important to me. This road trip showed me that Will is that kind of true friend to me. And I hope I can be the same to him and to others. And I hope that those of you watching have friends like Will, true friends. I hope you can cherish them. And if you don't have true friends like that, first of all, I'm so sorry. A lot of people do suck. This world can be a bloody awful place sometimes. But I hope that if that's the case for you, that maybe you can be that friend to someone. And then hopefully one day they'll return the favor. And I say that within reason, of course. You can go to the other extreme and end up being a slave to some narcissistic ass who just takes advantage of your kindness. But I do believe a good friendship is about standing with each other. And I feel like this world has become so obsessed by this idea of what's in it for me that we've forgotten what true friendship is all about. And this road trip reminded me. It reminded me what, what the love of a true friend looks like. makes me a little teary just to think of it. And I pray that if you too have forgotten what it looks like, that it might just remind you too. And this is not on the script, but it just came to me. If you have friends like that, don't leave it too late to tell them how much you appreciate it. It'll mean the world to them and they probably don't hear it enough.
Put that, put that, so we can roll the wings across the deck. There we go. What's one of those things? And you were like, yeah. <laughs> it would have been so fucking funny ah. if it didn't fit through the fucking door. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got it that far. <laughs> That's the rear projection look. Look at that! It looks so smooth. We have some. Check the face! Yeah. It's so good. Oh, oh yeah, this control is broken. I forgot about that. Man, it's just such a. T and the response time is crazy! Oh, let me zoom in on that. The response time is just absolutely instant. Yeah, it's a CFT, man. I haven't played Jack and Daxter this fluidly since I was a kid. Haven't you played this on your CFT? Oh, yeah, we did, but like as an eight year old, right? Oh! Every time I've played it since has been like on an LCD. Yeah. And this is just a world of difference better. So if you're out there, right, and you want to play these PS2 era games, yeah, and you you don't want to spend crazy money on a direct view CRT because now they're bloody collector's items. Mm -hmm. No one wants these. <laughs> and rear projection is like a cheap way to get a lot of TVs with very good sound. All the benefits of a CRT: CRT color, CRT response time. 42 inch size. Let me remind you guys behind the camera here that we paid 50 euros, 5 CRO euros for this TV. For a 42 inch CRT. Yes. And not and they and it's so much lighter than a CRT, right? A direct view CRT that's 42 inches would be 100 kilos. Easy. Yeah, more. But because this is rear projection, 60. 60 kilos. We were able to lift it, just the two of us. These vents. Here. Rip open this door. It shines, man. Doesn't it? This TV is a beast. Good work. Yeah. When I was telling my favorite local coffee shop owner about this video, he said the word that comes to mind for him after I described the experience that this TV provides is a Danish word, hugli. The word translates directly to cozy. However, he told me that hugli is less a word and more an overall feeling or concept that's important to the Danish people. The internet magazine Afar defined it as a word that refers to finding comfort pleasure and warmth in simply soothing things such as a cozy atmosphere or the feeling of friendship. Old tech like these rear projection CRT TVs invoke such a feeling of oogly. They produce this dreamy image that stirs a nostalgic, comforting feeling in anyone who watches one. When watching anything on these TVs, you feel like a child again. There's almost this desire that the TV invokes to want to sit cross-legged in front of it like a kid enjoying a movie on the big screen on a Saturday morning. Watching Hannah Montana or other movies from that time period on this beast just feel so right, so at home, and of course, so hoogly. Something about the way that the slightly washed out colors and the slightly blurry projector look just feel so comforting to me. But it's not just me that this magical old beast has cast a spell on. The other night, Will told me that a great movie to try on this TV would be one of his all-time favourites, Treasure Planet. We put it on only intending to watch a few minutes, but Will and I were so captured by the cosy spirit of this TV that we ended up turning off the lights 
and watching the whole thing on a Tuesday night. Rear projection CRTs get a bad rap in the CRT community, and I don't think it's quite deserved. While they may lack the clarity, an ultra sharp scan line look of direct view CRTs, and they may have some truly quirky viewing angles. Isn't it crazy? That's how much brightness you lose just by moving to the height, head height of that chair. That's basically the difference bet between like a TN panel and an OLED panel, basically. Yes, in a couple inches, right? Yes. So you just literally from that angle, that's the image you get. And if that's your only idea of rear projection CRT, it might be a dim idea. Mm. But then if you go just down the tiniest bit, the image is now absolutely gobsmackingly good. In the right context, they have a film-like, ethereal and dreamy look about them that I think not even a direct view CRT has. They are unique and beautiful machines in their own way. Not to mention that they come from an age where TVs actually had decent speakers built in from the factory. <laughs> You don't need to buy a soundbar with one of these. The sound system can truly shake the room. So my conclusion is, if you can find one of these in your area in good condition, and of course if you have the room in your house, I wholeheartedly recommend CRT rear projection TVs. They can be truly fantastic if you're willing to accept their faults. And now I say CRT rear projection because not long after this model was released, several LCD, SXRD and DLP models began to come out and those are a whole nother beast. They don't have all the same qualities of CRT rear projection and frankly they're nowhere near as reliable. In a month or two I plan to take a deeper dive into this TV and show you what it can really do once it's calibrated and of course when it's fed the right signal from a really good source. But for now, I hope that this video inspires you around finding some old tech that can bring that sense of warmth into your home, just like this TV did for us. And maybe just to inspire you to take a friend for a road trip to go and get it. This is Greenham Gaming, reminding you once again that old tech still has a lot of love to give, as well as to remind you of the comforts that a true friendship can bring. Not to mention the comfort of an old Volvo. <laughs> that's something that's new to me, but something I'll never forget. Thanks again for watching, and good night. William, what did you just say? It's a good day. Both the blinkers are working in this old beast. So there are days where both of the blinkers don't work? No, no, no. There are days where the left blinker, uh, it has some um, connection issues to the front left blinker of this car. So sometimes it just doesn't want to work. <laughs> but today is a good day. It works. Today is, today is a day where we are blessed to have yes. both blinkers in the Volvo V60. Yeah, that's nothing you can take for granted, you know? Yeah, you need to appreciate the little things in life. Yeah, you do. You really do. <laughs>
service, yeah. No, we're not going to give you a service right now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You've got work to do before you get a service. Yeah. <laughs> you don't deserve service yet. Not yet. you got to earn your service. Yes. 